Hey folks, today I want to take a look at the Sia 10 V3 in a long-term fashion. The story about this printer is, I bought this one eight months ago and I already did a first impressions video about this printer. I will link it right here so you can check that out and get more details about the overall technical details and my first impressions of this printer. This video will be kind of different. I have gathered a lot of experience over the past eight months with this printer and give you a more detailed impression than what I did in the first one. Without further ado, let's jump into the pros and cons of my experience with this printer after eight months. I try to be honest, um, I have more con points than pro points, however, in general, this doesn't decide if this is a bad or good machine. More on that in the end. The first pro point is an obvious one, it's the build volume. The print volume is huge and these prints are working really reliable, even when printing for four, five days or stuff like that, um, the prints almost never fail. The second point I already mentioned at the first point, I had a really low failure rate. As said, I printed large stuff like, for example, the sword you can see in the background with tall and thin pieces, they almost never failed. I printed helmets and I also printed stuff for my Etsy store, small little boxes, which, yeah, worked pretty, pretty well. And the third point is, to my surprise, I would say, the bed. Um, I'm a fan of the PEI sheets or even better are uh, the spring steel sheets with PEI powder coat. I really like those. So I was really skeptic about the bed, but when printing PLA, the prints stick down really well when the build plate is hot and when it cools down, they somehow magically self-release, which I really like. I also printed PTG on the printer um, because I wanted this machine to print that. Um, and general flat pieces are a little bit warpy, I would say. I couldn't really improve that, but cleaning the build volume was really necessary for P PTG. Um, smaller PTG parts printed perfectly fine. And now let's tackle some con points. I tried to work myself down the list with yeah, not so severe problems and more important problems, which I will talk about in more detail. The first point is, the printer itself is really silent. Only one thing of the control unit housing, there's a fan which is really loud. So um, I kind of wish they used a different fan there. Uh, you probably can replace this with a Noctua one. I just didn't do that. I didn't saw the necessity of doing that. But after eight months turning on the printer and hearing this loud fan noise, yeah, it's kind of outdated, I would say. It's a thing of the past not of 2021 anymore. The second point is a, I would say, rather poor design choice. Um, they did maybe because they had to. This printer specifically has a direct drive E3D extruder. So it doesn't have a Bowden extruder as the V2 or the original CR10. So they kind of had to move the filament sensor to the upper Y gantry bar and there's this cable tangling around just besides of the printer, which is not really cool. And when you print really tall objects, um, your filament can or has to make a really, really sharp curve. And if you use a brittle PLA, for example, it can break. And the problem is it will break below your filament sensor. And basically, yeah, your print will not print to the finish because the extruder won't have any filament to extrude, but your sensor will say, okay, if there's filament inside your sensor, everything is fine. It really is only when you print up to the highest Z height. So I experienced that, but I saw that and I was able to, to change the filament, but it's just a poor design cho choice. The third point is the firmware. The firmware which I'm running is the latest firmware, so 
it should work just fine and it generally does. Only one point is when you change the filament by the user interface, um, obviously they forgot some strings in there. There's just some random words um, which should instruct you to unload the filament and then load something else and then the filament is purging and then you can start printing again but there's no user interface telling you this you just have to guess what the printer is doing and another point is i think they forgot to change some settings that this is a direct drive and not a bowden extruder because when you change the filament then it purges the filament but it purges so much that you have a huge blob of filament beside below the nozzle i think this is due to the fact that they try to compensate for the Bowden tube for the Bowden setup, but as said, this is a direct extruder. You do not have to purge and compensate the Bowden setup for this printer. So again, they could have tested this. There could be a new firmware for this um, to optimize this. If you know this, it's not a big deal, but again, it's a little bit sloppy. Now to the third, fourth and fifth point, which are more and severe in my opinion. The fourth point is that, yeah, you have a E3D extruder on top of this printer and below that there is working a knockoff E3D V6 hot end, which kind of doesn't make sense for me to use such a good extruder and then a knockoff. Um, why does this bother me? Well, um, at some point I had to disassemble the extruder because I had severe clogs. This was not the fault of the machine. This was fault of a filament I used with a high particle input which clogged up all my printers so the filament wasn't really good. And what's the point? What did I discover? Well, um, something which I didn't know and which kind of bothers me. The knockoff extruder of Creality has a PTFE tubing which goes all the way down to the nozzle. It doesn't go only into the heat break, but all the way down. I prepared a small drawing where you can see that actually, because I didn't record the footage of disassembling the extruder back then. I didn't knew that I would discover that. Um, and what's the deal there? Well, PTFE uh, kind of gets soft at 240 and also can start melting at 240 to 60 degree. Um, which is not good when printing, for example, PETG at 240 degrees or even printing ABS at 250 to 255 degrees. I absolutely wouldn't recommend using this setup to print ABS, for example. Another spot which I discovered on the hot end when taking it down is a air gap. Usually you have a heatsink and your heat break is screwed into the heatsink. I was a little bit confused because I didn't have a Creality machine before that the heat break simply slides into the heatsink and I was actually able to move it a little bit around inside of the heatsink and this definitely would affect terminal conductivity of this assembly. What I did then is to apply some thermal paste onto the heat break when sliding it into the heatsink so that thermal conductivity should be way improved. And the last and honestly I think the biggest point for myself is the V-rollers. After only a couple of weeks I experienced high abrasion on the V-rollers, mainly on the X-axis and later also on the Y-axis. Um, I will show you some pictures of the abrasion um, you would say now, okay, you didn't set up the V-rollers correctly. Um, yeah, could be. I tried to, honestly. I couldn't achieve a perfect rolling. Um, I would also expect that if you buy a mainly pre-assembled machine, you don't have to do that. Um, what I did then is exchanging on the X-axis the V-rollers versus some polycarbonate V-rollers. As you can see, these also show signs of abrasion. In my opinion, they last longer. Um, you just need to prepare some V-rollers if your print quality gets worse. And something which is even more bothering 
um, is that if your y-axis virus disintegrate basically and cause some abrasion, the flakes will fall down into your prints or can fall down. I had many prints which, uh, with some black spots in it, which is kind of bothering if you want to sell these products to end users and you have to throw them away basically. So as I said before, um, I have more negative con points than pro points. But what is my overall resume about this printer? I bought this printer for a large bill volume. I also wanted to have a direct drive extruder to print flexibles, yeah, and because honestly I like direct drives more than Bowden drive. Um, and there are not so many uh, large format printers. Um, besides this one, maybe the Artillery X1, X2, uh, which have direct drive setups and a large build volume. Um, what is my conclusion? This printer is, I think, a relic of the past. Yes, it works reliably. It has some poor design choices and the user interface is just from, I would say, 2019. Um, I wish they would have used a E3D V6. I think for the price it could be doable. Um, the machine is about $460 and I would just expect a little bit more. For those of you asking if you need a BL Touch, which BL Touch to use, I never needed a BL Touch. As said, the bed worked really nice. I really rarely have to re-level the bed only if I disassemble anything or replace the V-rollers, of course. Um, so I didn't need that. If you have watched my first impressions video, um, this one I would honestly say was a little bit more hyped. Um, I kind of needed to make this long-term review to give you my experience after eight months. All in all, yes, I would rebuy this machine, but I would have a different expectation of the machine. And for me, it's personally very important that you have the right expectation what to do. If you're somebody who needs a direct drive on a large format printer, which has to work reliably, this machine is something for you. Only if you want to invest some time tinkering and improving the machine. It's not that extreme, but you will need some time. If you are a user who wants to take it out of the box, assemble it for 20 minutes, um, and then never touch it again, then this machine might not be for you. To give you a little bit impression of my own journey about this printer, I made this small little graphics um, where you have time on the x-axis and hype on the y-axis. Um, basically, this was my experience after buying the printer. This probably is where I released my first impressions video. Then I discovered two things. For example here I discovered the abrasion of the V-rollers, then I discovered also the knockoff E3D extruder um, hot end with its small little downsides and afterwards after fixing this um, I had a really yeah normal experience with the printer where I can say okay now it works kind of good um, but it's not the perfect machine um, if I would do some tinkering, probably you can get back up to this point, for example. The last point is also I want to show you some prints I made. For example, I printed the frontman mask from Squid Game, which came out surprisingly awesome. The print quality is really, really good. I also printed a Boba Fett helmet, which I also think came out quite good. There I used a really high layer height of 0.28 millimeters so you actually can see the layers of course um, and I never finished the helmet with sanding and filling I just painted it so yeah it kind of looks okay. As said I also printed a lot of these boxes from my Etsy store and these worked really really well. So <laughs> I tried to make this video short but I think I didn't achieve this goal. Nonetheless, I hope you found this video informative and you can make your own opinion when watching both videos about this printer. If you have any more questions about the printer or something else, 
just leave me a comment in the comment section below. And if you liked it, then leave a like and subscribe to my channel. As always, I want to thank you for watching, have a nice day and goodbye.